All right, Aliko 3 here. Um, and this break won't be for everybody, but it is a uh, nostalgia-based break, and it's 1989 Bowman. This was the uh, comeback edition. Um, they, they took some time off, and they came back with this set, and they made the cards, they're, they're a little bit uh, longer or taller. I think kind of like 54 and 55 Bowman. Don't quote me on that, though. But um, there are a ton of Hall of Famers in this. And this is uh, prime pickings for trying to find slab cans of uh, Junk Wax Hall of Famers, which is right up my alley. And I know some other people enjoy that too. So we're just going to break the packs on camera. They actually break really easy. And you get bonus 36 sticks of gum, which is nice. There's Cal. Cal, Billy, and his dad. Um, I think the cards are really cool looking. They have a nice feel to them too. So, I mean, there's one I would consider if it was like perfect. Bo Jackson. So I'm going to make a slab cam pile over here to the right. Then I guess at the end we can flip through and uh, see the possible candidates. So there's two benefits to me on breaking stuff like this. One is, of course, you get... There's a dot gun. I'll just put like a stars pile of cards I want slab to. Like, I mean, I would slab this if it was perfect. 1989 Bowman. This is actually in the uh, the registry. It's kind of on the, the TV. Kind of like the 50. Is that the 55? The craziest thing I've seen in a while is that, that guy that pulled. Uh, that one's off center. Uh, the uh, guy that pulled the was Mano 55 and got a PSA 9 at the National this year. I guess when it happened, he just screamed, <laughs> which is what anybody else would do. I mean, any serious collector would get pumped up like that. Look at his hair poking out through the hat there. And I think some people try to, like, cut these out and then stain the back to make them look like they're the actual thing. But be very uh, cautious with that. That's why it's almost better just to buy older cards slabbed there's a lot of great people in the hobby but there are those uh, snakes out there too so you gotta be very careful sometimes there's a thriller that, see that one's off centered and you can tell that pretty quick there's an outlighter off centered uh, Ryan Sandberg it's off right to left so um, there is there is no guarantee that that we do pull a Ken, but it it it, it would be cool. That's a Royce Clayton rookie. I, I guess I'll put that aside. This is also an era of great mustaches. We broke the Topps Heritage high number, and saw some great stashes uh, yesterday. Here's a Donnie baseball. That one's off center too. So um, I think the theme we're seeing with these is uh, the centering issues. We'll have to bust a Fleer box on camera from this year, too. There's a cow. It's a little off-centered. I guess I'll put it in the review pile. Andy Bennis, he was a pretty good player. Jay Buhner, that's a second-year Buhner. Alan Trammell, Hall of Famer. Jeff Montgomery was a great player for us. So, yeah, I... Moved to KC in 1992, so I kind of um, caught a big chunk of uh, Jeff Jeff Montgomery's career. There's George Brett. That one looks um, off center, top to bottom. Charles Nagy was, I think he's a pitching coach now. Eddie Mother F and Murray. I don't like to cuss on my channel because <laughs> I got some some kids that watch. Even though most kids know about cuss words. I probably hear him all the time. Just base. There's Rex Hunter. He's actually our uh, color commentator. Steve Finley. Great career. 2,000 plus hits. So, uh, boxes of this. I think they're like... 10 to 15 bucks. It kind of depends because... It's so expensive to ship a, something like this that's so heavy. So I think you would be doing yourself 
you would be doing pretty good if you could get one of these boxes for 15 shipped. Um, that's kind of what I think the, the market is on this box. So if, if it's worth it to you, it's cheaper than a blaster. Um, we haven't hit a ton of cards that I think are good slab cans yet, but that's kind of the the nature of the beast with these older junk waxes. Um, sometimes you'll get a box where the cards are just all off-centered or dinged, and that's just the way it goes. It's kind of like the uh, luck of the draw. See, I mean, this one's barely off-centered, so I probably wouldn't send that one. And, of course, I'd have to take a closer look at it. So there's the 51. I, I could see somebody cutting this one out. <laughs> it looks, I mean, it's, it's the same size as the other one. Joe Carter. That's Tom Hankey. That Cecil? I thought that was Cecil for a second. He's way too skinny. There's a nice Pucket. I would definitely slab Pucket. He's a great player. Tragic loss. He was young, too. I think he was like 45. Kind of like uh, Tony Gwynn. But I think Tony Gwynn was a little older. And Gwynn passed away, I think it was around 20, was it 2014, 2013? That's what I'm thinking on him. Harold Reynolds, MOB Network, dude. Tons of cool hairstyles going on in 89. See, I would have been just uh, preschool, starting kindergarten. That guy just looks like a dork. <laughs> There's no other way to say it. Glenn Hubbard, he always looks like a pedophile slash serial rapist. Ricky Henderson, that, that one looks pretty good. I'll definitely put that aside. Love some Ricky Henderson slab stuff. Um, so, of, of course, we would love to pull a Griffey, but I have broke these before, and that's a cool photo. There is no guarantee of a can. Smolty. You know, the the cards are just barely off. They're, like, just barely off-center. seems like the majority are 60-40s. So they, they, there's probably a lot of PSA Mint 9s, but like I said before with the Junk Wax, there's a Tony Gwynn. That one looks centered. Um, you're kind of looking for 10s, aren't you? I mean, if you get 9s, like grading Junk Wax isn't like you're trying to make a ton of money. You're just kind of having fun and testing yourself, trying to add cards to your own uh, registries of cards that you like and sets that you collected as a kid. That's kind of how I see it. Um, of course, if you get tens of certain sets, you can do pretty well on, with certain players, too. That guy looks, uh, scary. What's his name? Pat Sheridan. Tons of cards. <laughs> this might be like a 15 minute break. Daryl Strawberry. Put him aside. I wouldn't slab him. I only slab the Hall of Famers and then uh, Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson has a lot of hobby. There we go. There's a pack fresh Kenny. Quick look at it. What what is it? Sixty forty? You guys think? I think it's fifty five forty five. It looks pretty good. I'll I'll look at it after. Crime dog. He was kind of on the fringe of the hall, right? Mitch Williams. There, there's a Raffy. Lying steroid user Raffy. There's John Farrell. He got fired. For winning two two titles for them. <laughs> Weird how baseball is. Rico is a good player. So I'll, I think I'll have to do another uh, 91 Bowman on, on camera. There's just so many cool cards in that set. That one's got like a surface dent wrinkle. So that's out for sure. That's a Tino. I think that's a second year. Because he's got like an 88 tops traded. Tom Gordon rookie. 
He was good. Flash. He's got two two kids in Pro Bowl. Um, of course, D. And also Nick with the Twins, who hasn't made it up yet. <clears throat> There's a Bonzi. That one looks uh, pretty nice. Uh, you you just can't beat pack fresh cards. I mean, you 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 can go on ComC, you know, and buy these cards. I don't know, pretty cheap. Not not that cheap. You probably have to pay sixty cents a a card still, which isn't a crazy amount. But if you're buying like ten cards, you're already up to six bucks. There's a yawn, so it just makes sense if you want pack fresh cards and have some fun to, to bust these. Brady Anderson and Rock Reigns or Tim Reigns. Some of his cards from the mid 90s say Rock Reigns, which is kind of cool. And of course, the the back card in every pack, you won't be able to send that in because it's got that gum stain from sitting in the pack for almost 30 years. But uh, it's fun. There's Eric Davis, who's awesome. Flip cards, flip great. That's a cool Edgar. Jerome Walton, he was a probably touted up there with Griffey. Not as high, but he was a huge prospect. From what I remember, I used to buy the Becketts in like ninety ninety three, and. Uh, Jerome Walton cards were a big thing back then. But, I mean, kind of like a lot of prospects today, some of them just don't uh, live up to the uh, billing. It's kind of hard to meet or exceed the expectations that people put on these kids when they first get drafted, um, when they've never played against top-level competition. Bunch of commons. But I think we have a nice stack of slab cans to look through. That's Paul Molitor. All right, five packs left with this. There's Bogsy. Cards are kind of getting tougher to flip because I got the gum uh, residue on my hands now. There's Conseco back of the pack stain. There's some of the residue down there. BJ Surhoff was good. Um, that's a Sandy Alomar rookie. He was an all star. John Crook. <clears throat> Jim Abbott was cool. There's the Hawk. <clears throat> I saw Otis Nixon through that last stack. Robin Ventura, that's a rookie. Okay, last pack. Got to pull Harold, Harold Baines out for sure. Uh, that's a Tommy Glavin second year. Or Glavin. Okay, so here's all. There's the packs. It's like a mountain of packs. And here's the stacks. Left is common base. The middle is like stars that I won't slab. And then this stack is kind of like, I mean, I haven't even looked at them closely, but potential slab cans. So let's just flip through real quick. Dave Winfield, Sheffield, Reigns, Bonds. And we did pull the Griffey, which was cool. Maddox, Gwynn, Smoltz. I mean, these are just all cool players. Probably won't slab Steve Finley. And that bottom, that bottom one, one was just so Bo wouldn't have to sit on the bottom on the table. If that makes sense. And I don't, I don't think I'd slab Dawson or Crime Dog either. That's it. Fun break.